Great day, great day, my beautiful people. The Divine here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving into practical tips for building stronger and healthier relationships. Let's get started. Healthy relationships involve honesty, trust, respect, and open communication between partners. And they take effort and compromise from both people. There is no imbalance of power. Partners respect each other's independence and can make their own decisions without fear of retribution or retaliation and share decisions. The foundation of a healthy relationship include boundaries, communication, trust, and consent. With boundaries, you and your partner are able to find ways to meet each other's needs in ways that you both feel comfortable with. With communication, you and your partner can share your feelings, even when you don't agree, in a way that makes the other person feel safe, heard, and not judged. Trust. Building trust can take time and allows couples to be vulnerable with one another, knowing that they can rely on the other person. Consent. This is most commonly used when you're being intimate. Giving consent means that you are okay with what is happening and that no one is forcing you or guilting you into doing anything you don't want to do. Consent can be given and taken back at any time. And giving consent once doesn't mean you automatically give consent in the future. Keep in mind that in some abusive relationships, trying to enforce boundaries, honest communication, trust, and other healthy behaviors could put your safety at risk and could also be a trigger for the other party. Remember, abuse is about power and control and someone who's, who is abusive might not want to give up their control over you. So back to boundaries. Having boundaries is like drawing a line. One side has the things you are okay with, and the other side, those that you are not okay with. Don't feel ready for or make you uncomfortable. This line looks different for everyone, so it is important for you to know where your needs to be drawn. Setting boundaries is a way to teach your partner about your needs and let you know when something doesn't feel right. You are allowed to put your needs before someone else's, especially if their needs make you uncomfortable. Physical. Are you okay with public displays of affection? Does affection make you uncomfortable? Do you hate it or love it when your partner tickles you? Do you need a lot of alone time? Emotional. Are you able to share what you are feeling right away? Or do you need some time to think about it? Do you need your partner to, to be available anytime you have a crisis? When are you ready to say I love you? Do you need to get to know your partner before engaging in any type of intimate activity? Or are you okay with getting physical right away? Are you okay with your partner posting your relationship status? Is it okay if your partner uses your phone? Do you wanna share passwords? Do you like to practice spirituality with your partner or alone? 
Does your partner need to have the same beliefs as you or can they be different as long as you are respected? Letting your partner know what your boundaries are. Okay, so you don't have to sit down with your partner with a checklist, okay? (laughs) But you do have to be open and honest. Like if your partner wants to share passwords after dating for six months, when your needs are different than your partner's, have a conversation. You don't need to give an explanation. It may be awkward, but having the tough conversations is a part of having a healthy relationship. When your partner listens to you and you listen to your partner and your partner respects you and you respect your partner, it builds trust. Recognizing when the line has been crossed. Sometimes boundaries get crossed even after you've talked with your partner. This is where trusting yourself comes in. You may be sad, anxious, or angry, or you may not know exactly what you are feeling. Always trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right to you, it probably isn't. If a boundary has been crossed by your partner who didn't know where your line was drawn, have an honest conversation. It could be something as simple as, hey, I really don't like it when this makes me really uncomfortable. Do you think the next time you can, this might take some back and forth before coming to an agreement that meets both of your needs, but your relationship will be stronger. If a boundary has been crossed, even though you have already been clear about your boundaries, Crossing a line might be obvious, like if you say no to something, but your partner uses physical force to make you do something you don't want to do. It can also be more subtle, like if your partner guilts you into something, begs you until you give in or threatens you to break up unless you do what they want you to do communication open and honest communication is as important in any relationship because it allows you to share who you are and what you need from people around you miscommunication is common but can often lead to problems misunderstandings and hurt feelings. These tips will help you talk to your partner more honestly. Speaking. Be open and clear about how you are feeling. If you don't understand something, tell them. Use I statements so that the other person doesn't feel like you are blaming or attacking them. Be honest. Even if you think the other person might not like hearing how you truly feel. Apologize when you are wrong or hurt the other person. When talking about something negative, also mention something positive. Listening. Pay attention without distractions. Put that phone down. When the other person is talking, listen. To what they are saying instead of just thinking about how to respond. Wait for them to finish talking before you say something. Use acknowledging statements like interesting to let them know you hear what they are saying so they don't feel dismissed. Ask questions if you don't understand something to avoid confusion and misunderstanding. Don't leave them hanging. If you need to think about what they said before responding, tell that. Tell them that. Be prepared to hear something that you don't like and really think about it before responding. Make eye contact, face them, and give them your full attention. 
do not have an important conversation over text or online. When chatting online, focus on the conversation instead of being distracted by other things or having multiple other conversations. If you can respond, let the other person know so you don't leave them hanging. When talking about something important, talk when you are feeling calm or take some time to cool down if you had a fight. Talk about your concerns before they become problems and get worse. Make sure you are talking privately so you can be open about your feelings. If you feel that your partner doesn't do these things, you might be getting emotionally abused or vice versa. Trust. It can take time to build trust. And while it can be hard to trust someone, especially if your trust was broken in the past, you can't blame your current partner for something someone else did. Here are a few ways to build trust. Be reliable. If you needed your partner to listen to you because you were having a bad day, or if you needed a ride, would they be there for you? Would you be there for them? Respect boundaries. Again, when you tell your partner that something makes you uncomfortable, do they respect that? Does it go both ways? Be honest. Does your partner tell you how they feel instead of just giving you the silent treatment? Do you tell your partner how you feel and make an effort to talk talk things through? If you made a mistake, would you tell your partner? Would your partner tell you? Walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. Do what you say and say what you mean. Consent is an agreement between two people given through words or actions that they are both clearly and enthusiastically willing to engage in intimate activity. Silence or lack of resistance does not count as consent. Some people aren't able to give consent, such as individuals who are drunk, sleeping, or unconscious, and some people with intellectual disabilities. Consent involves active communication And knowing that one person always has the right to withdraw consent. This means that someone can consent to one activity, but not consent to another. Getting consent can be simple. It's all about communication. You can talk about boundaries before engaging in any type of intimate activity. But you should always regularly check in with a simple, is it okay? To ensure everyone involved is comfortable with what is going on. I appreciate you hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that like button and subscribe for more content. Share with someone who may find value and comment. Also hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. See you in the next one. Take care.